Hi everybody, welcome to Empowering uh, Wednesday where we offer a tip kind of more exclusively for women. Uh, Christy and I are here today and we want to talk about pepper spray. Now I know that there's a lot of women out there that either have bought this for themselves or have had this given to them probably as a gift. Now first thing I want to say, the things we're going to show in this video, uh, you know, don't try it at home. Um, we're going to demonstrate spraying it, all the effects of it, that type of stuff. But let's just start off this way. Uh, this is Sabre and it is a dog and coyote attack spray. So if you go to your local, um, you know, kind of uh, adventure supply stores or camping stores, you can see bear sprays and all kind of stuff like that. Um, a lot of people, again, have, I think, a misconception of how this could be used as a self-defense tool. Now, one of the things with this, as we talked about, right, is that, you know, a lot of women out there are potentially in situations where they have restraining orders, yep, uh, where they're dealing with, uh, you know, ex-husbands or boyfriends, stalking problems, situations yep. like that, where, again, I think a lot of people have... Are if, carrying this. Yeah, are carrying sure. this. If they didn't buy it for themselves, then somebody gave it to them as a gift. Or they, they've been, a, in previous, they've been a vile... Uh, a person who has, you know, been a victim of violence and, and they're carrying this on them at the present time. Yeah, so um, we wanted just to make sure that at least you understood how this works and you can draw your own conclusions as to whether or not you think it's a viable tool. Um, one of the first things I'd say is that most people that carry these never spray these, which means they don't understand that there's actually typically comes a safety tip, uh, you know, a release on the front of it. So the first thing to do is make sure that if you're actually going to carry it, it has to be operational. You're not going to have time under stress to pop the seal off the top of it and then get ready to deploy it. This one had a plastic tip on the front of it that had to be removed first. Then you can kind of see that this just safety latch over the trigger lifts up. So you just simply put your thumb underneath there and that access the trigger button. Then you depress the trigger button and you're going to get a spray. Now some of these will shoot out in a straight stream and yeah. others will shoot out as a mist. Like a big mist. Yeah, and it's very important to understand the difference. Of course, these all come in different sizes and all that type of stuff. Yeah. But what I want to show you is this. Um, for most things, I'm going to hand this to Christy for a second. If she was carrying that for a self-defense tool, most likely it's probably in a purse. And if it's in a purse and all of a sudden she finds herself the victim of an assault and she doesn't have a lot of forewarning, then it's useless. Inside the purse, it's, it's not going to help you. So the ability for her to be able to reach in, grab that, so access it, <laughs> uh, yeah, pull it out of the purse. Oh, I got this instead because it's the same size. There you go. So boom. Now she finally finds it. Then she's got to get it, a, a grip on it. Then she's got to get her finger underneath it. Careful. <laughs> she's got to get her finger on that it's trigger. Live. Then she's got to aim it and then she's got to deploy that. Okay, so I wanted to show you a couple things with that. Obviously, if we're going to have her put it back in the purse real quick, and you kind of probably figuring out why I'm wearing some old clothes here and an old hat, but here's the thing. The other side is that a lot of attackers, this is what they're wearing, things like hoodies and big jackets and ball caps. They're trying to be discreet. So these things offer a lot of protection. For her to be able to actually use the pepper spray effectively, she's got to get it in my eyes. And I know we've all seen a lot of videos where people are standing there and they get sprayed straight in the eyes or the police are working to contain somebody and they pull out their pepper spray and they spray them right in the face. Theirs is a lot more potent, a lot more powerful than what you can buy on the market. And it's in a, more of a controlled environment. Yeah. That's not live. That's not real. That's not true aggression. That's not... Well, it's, you know, they're dealing where they have typically numbers and they're working to contain people. I mean, it falls within their use of sport, force spectrum for sure. But let's watch them, for example. So if Christy is just coming home and I've hidden somewhere and then I wanted to come out and attack her, just, we're just going to go through it slow, but watch for a second. So if I'm out of camera range... And the second she sees me coming, she has to then get into the purse and she has to look for it and grab it. Obviously, I'm already at her. Now, here's a couple things. Even if she got it in her hands, but I rushed and closed the distance and she was to bring that up and to deploy that in my face at this point in time, she's also going to get contaminated with this. Okay? The second thing I want you to understand is that if she pulled that out and we're in a scuffle, what am I going to do if I see that come into my face? What is the natural visceral response anytime somebody has something thrust into their face? It's to turn the hand away or it's to really, as a startle flinch response, to push away from danger, which means to knock things out of the way. That happens very quick. So again, what happens is she might have that in her hands, she might be able to spray it, but the chances of it hitting me directly in the eyes are very, very slim. But let's just for a second here, let's take a look at what the stream looks like. So I'm just going to have Christy aim it this way and just deploy it once, and I want you to see the stream. Okay? Now I noticed what she was trying to do. I guarantee she wasn't trying to aim it up and to the left. She was probably trying to go dead center, yet it's not easy to aim all the time and you can see the wind catch it and quickly disperse it. And came back at us. And it came back and she's actually tried to get out of the way of it and probably <laughs> tasting a little bit of it. Yeah. 
But now what I want you to see is I want you to see what happens if I go to camera range again and I come back and this time we're going to give her some of the advantages. We're going to let her have it in her hand. We're going to let her have her finger on the trigger. She knows that I'm about to come at her. And what I want her to do is I want her, knowing all of those things, having all of those advantages, I want her to try to spray me in the face because there's something else I want you to see with this. So I want her to do her best to spray me in the face. And I'm going to do what I would do to avoid being sprayed in the face. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to try all that hard to have it avoid me because I'm pretty certain that it's going to be pretty tough to hit me in the eyes. So let's take a look at how this would actually play out. Just stay off to your left a little. Here. Now. <coughs> it's always I, fun to get to spray your husband with pepper spray. <laughs> I absolutely, <coughs> you might want to back up for me a little bit. Clearly, I've got some of the mist and residue in my eyes. It's tough to open my eyes. But I can still talk. I can still move. I can still grab. Matter of fact, if I keep my eyes closed, it actually feels fairly soothing because the tears are starting to come and starting to wipe it away. Right there, just talking and breathing. <coughs> Definitely starts to affect the respiratory. My left eye is a little worse than my right eye. The residue on my clothing is obviously still kind of affecting me. If, however, I get up to her like I did and I don't have to stop, might not be able to open my eyes a lot, which is a great thing. I can open them just enough to get a couple glimpses to orientate. That might buy her time to get away, but the thing that I want you to have and understand is that it didn't stop me like a lot of people think it would. I think a lot of people have the misconception that if I come running up and I get sprayed in there, that it's just going to stop me instantaneously. So again, I'm just able to barely open my eyes get a little bit of a sight to orientate, and then I'd have to work from there. So, I'm gonna step out and I'm gonna start to detox. Okay, and it's gonna take me about 15 or 20 minutes to flush my eyes and get all of it out. And I'll tell you one thing, the longer it sits in my eyes, the more intense that feeling starts to happen, the more the intense the burning starts to become. But again, the respiratory's fine. Physically, I feel absolutely fine. I simply cannot see effectively. I can open my eyes. Now remember, I'm also not under adrenaline. I'm not excited, I'm not scared, I'm not mad. I'm not emotionally invested in the assault. If I was, that provides me a lot more juice and I could fight through the eye thing a little bit more. Okay, so today's tip, I feel very funny standing here talking to my eyes, Shep, but today's tip is I wanted you to see firsthand what pepper spray can do. Yes. Now I'm gonna let Christy finish this up. I'm gonna step out, start to take off the decontam or, you know, decontaminate and get that process and get this out of my eyes. And, uh, you know, I'll see you next Wednesday. And Christy has something to tell you about an upcoming program that we're offering. So I'll step out. So, ladies, um, this coming up, coming up this month, we have a women's personal protection program running. Um, in the link below, we will have the exact date, the time. So if you're interested, register. Um, and I hope that you find value in this tip today. And if you've ever been... Um, a victim of violence or you have those moments where you're feeling unsafe you're in a situation at the present time where you know things are going um, the right way we have lots of tips coming up in the next coming weeks to hopefully help you and I hope this added a tremendous amount of value today learning about um, bear spray and uh, what it can do until then guys stay safe Hey everybody, uh, we thought we'd just show you a quick follow-up to this. Uh, it's been about 20 minutes since we did it, uh, since I got the pepper spray, and um, I'll tell you what, it, uh, it definitely grows with intensity, which we knew from before. I've done this uh, on other occasions as well. It's yes, been a bit, yeah. but uh, you can clearly, I don't know if you can see it or not, I'll take the glasses off. Um, the redness in my face, and my eyes, and my ears, and down the back of my neck, and my forearms. Uh, believe it or not, the forearms were one of the most painful, especially when it hits water and stuff like that. But, um, you know, again, it, it takes the sight, for sure. But yeah. Christy had some interesting experiences with it, too. What did you experience? Um, I, well, I wore the sunglasses on purpose because we have done this before in the past and knew. Um, and I'm glad. But my mouth and the inside of my lips, and I can just taste it, and they're still burning. Yeah. So, and, and I mean, imagine spraying that and I would have gotten it in my eyes if yeah. I wouldn't have had those sunglasses on. So yeah. you also have to think about that in terms of being the person who's trying to use it as a tactic to
to defend yourself that you are going to get it and I got it in my mouth and my, I had giant sunglasses on so yeah. it protected my eyes. Yeah so it's just all we wanted to share was some considerations with this. I think it can be a valuable tool in the right time at the right place but for a lot of, a lot of women I think they're carrying it, they have it and haven't used it and they don't know what it's like and what it does and I just wanted to make sure that it was important for us that we yeah. cleared up any misconceptions that it is an absolute stopper. You know, you got a charging rhino at you, you hit him with a spray like that, and he stops. And, and that's not the case. They can physically continue to move. And um, you, might, you might yourself suck up damage as well. Exactly, that. and again, you know, it definitely closes the eyes, and the, the longer it goes on, you, like I said, you know, four, five, six minutes into that, it, it gets more intense on the eyes for sure. But that's five, six minutes into that, you know, so, and if you get hit in the eyes and you can't see and they can't see, but if there's contact, they can still keep, keep, still keep going. So that's it. It was just important for us to share some of those values. Uh, hopefully there's something you can take away from this. And I'll just get close with the camera and, and let you really see the redness here. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all in his face. And if you get this spot in his neck here, my his ear, ears, my, ear, my forearms. His forearms are quite red. And if you turn to the back, it got underneath his hoodie and on the back of his ears and on the back of his neck there. So looks like a sunburn kind of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, that's it. Uh, until next time, stay safe. Bye.